Hey everybody. <laughs> I know everybody's laughing. They've been seeing a lot of me today. Got a lot of stuff going on. So, what's everybody up to tonight? How's everybody doing? So, tell me how every day's been. I'm anxious to know how everybody is doing today. I actually have my tablet on so that I was doing some work here and I'm going to be um, updating a few things. So I thought I'd be live right now, see how everybody, everybody's doing today, see how everybody's up to. I know there's a couple of people doing some business online. Meet my Yopay light. It'll be funny. Somebody will send me blueberries. Not really. And I really don't like blueberry too much. But it was the next one. So, tomorrow at um, 8 p.m., me and uh, Vern Long, um, Vern Davis, Longhorn the Comedian, we will be doing a uh, live segment. We're going to start with my Facebook. Uh, the stuff will be recorded and be put on YouTube. Um, probably next month, I will start uh, some of the live YouTube stuff again. I usually keep that with um, traditional stuff. If you look at my YouTube, it's got like uh, derby, horses. Um, we do some meetings on there. I put... Uh, videos when we do the motivational videos and stuff on there we play video games and stuff like that and so I keep it um, for certain reasons I do do live feeds on there um, be, but because of uh, the amount of people it touches I hit about 272,000 people are subscribed to it so the stuff I put on it I like to um, go with stuff with Facebook first so I use both my platforms just to um, see what I can do so anyway what would everybody like to talk to you about tonight what would you guys like to talk about tonight um, I tell people like I said I'm not afraid to let people know what's going on in my life and everything else and you know different things I know I've had a lot of success in life and a lot of stuff I do is based on success and it's based on um, what people can do to be successful uh, what they can do to be motivated, you know, different business stuff they can use. Not just my business stuff. I don't want to ever give anybody that impression. I believe in what I do, but it doesn't mean that's what I want everybody else to do. Um, but what we can do is have different, like I said, I allow people to put their business stuff on my website. I don't mind. You know, you got everybody's got a business to run. And as long as it's a legit business, um, to me, it's just fine. Everybody's trying to make money. Everybody is trying to basically provide for their family and friends. So I have no problems with people putting business stuff. Now, if it's something that I don't agree with, I won't allow it on. But for the most part, no one's ever had to uh, run into that before. So tonight is a night to, to make fun of some of my friends. Um, I want to bring up the issue. I just saw what our governor uh, put on there about religion and religious services. You know, everything we're doing right now, we're taking leaps of faith in a lot of different things that are going on. But we do need to get back to our churches, our synagogues, you know, stuff like that. Because like I said, we have to have faith that, you know, we are human beings. You know, we can adapt and overcome. And like I said, a lot of this stuff is human made. So right now, you know, I think spirituality is a very big deal for people. So telling people they're not allowed to go back to church for another month, it's unacceptable. You know, now you're fringing on freedom of speech and uh, freedom of um, religion. Uh, and you don't want to do that because, like I said, there's not a disease in the world. And sometimes, like I said, people that have faith and stuff and people, you know, are you going to put your faith in government or faith in God? So to me, I, I believe in faith. And so for them to try to tell us they're going to shut our churches down, it, it's just one more step that government takes. And I'm not one of these people that goes out there. I'm not a crazy person. You know, I, I love everybody and I try to motivate everybody. But I'm also not one of these people. And I got really upset when they started doing protests with Confederate flags and acting like a bunch of hillbillies. And I didn't agree with that. Why? Because that does not get anybody's point across. That does not have mature standing behind it i i do a lot of immature stuff all the time first one to admit it first one to say it but here, here's the thing with that okay it's one thing to say and do stupid things say something on facebook or social media or something 
it's another to go out there and if you're trying to make sure that you always keep say your gun rights okay which i'm a big advocate for but i don't carry around guns and everybody's like well you don't care no you can defend and protect people's rights but you don't have to go out there being a fool carrying a big elephant gun that's not going to protect you nor anybody else you know the reason why we have a right to bear arms and this is just an example everybody so do not get mad at me for this but and i believe in this but do not get mad because i say this the reason why we have a right to bear arms is to protect us from our own government and when people think government that you can understand government starts at the local level not just federal government so you got your local government you got your state government then you got your federal government okay and that's what gun rights is about and you're allowed to have equal to whatever the government has so that they can never impede on all of your other rights i just keep it simple simple as that very simple do not let somebody take your other rights okay freedom of speech freedom of religion you know and this is what people forget they may be complaining about maybe like the muslim religion or islam or hindu or something like that because we're christian well you can't impede on their freedoms either. Freedom religion is for all religions, okay? Why do you think there's a church of pasta, the Pastafarians? I'm not kidding. It's an actual church. They believe in the pasta, you know? They have a strainer they use for their headgear. It's, I know it's preposterous, but it's true. But if you want to keep your rights, you can't think that yours is better than everybody else's because now all of a sudden you're infringing on somebody else's rights. So always remember that, okay? Freedom of speech is great. And it is one of the things we got to protect the most. So don't let anybody tell you otherwise. But as our kids get older, you know, don't let the schools, you know, sit there and dictate to them, you know, what's allowed and what's not when it comes to our rights. Because eventually what happens is they're just breeding out our freedoms. As simple as that. And a long time ago, a bunch of uh, Marines and Army have always said this. You know, we are protected from the outside every day, but the enemy within is what will destroy us. So just keep that in mind, okay? Live your life good, be a good person, treat everybody with respect, you know, you know, obey, uh, you know, and I don't mean this with social distancing, but you know, don't, don't get in somebody else's space and try to tell them or be better than them, okay? Just every day know that we're all great. We all have ideas, we all have voices. Some of us are gonna be leaders. Some of us will be followers. Some of the followers will pretend like they're leaders and they're not. You'll have managers be managers, but they're not leaders because when you sit there and you dictate to people and do things as do as I say, not as I do, our governor is a great example of that. When you send your wife and everybody to Florida, but you tell everybody else they have to remain, that's one of those people that says, do as I say, not as I do. Because, like I said, actions will always speak louder than words. That's why I don't like any politician on any side. They all lie, cheat, and steal. You know, they want us to do stuff, but they don't even fall underneath their own health care. So, you know, if you're going to pass health care for us, then you sure as heck better keep that same health care for you. So, that that's kind of where I go with that um, but like I said there's other pressing issues that we worry about and I'm not worried about politics my pressing issues are about the 22 men and women every day that kill themselves due to suicide because of military because of things they saw in the world okay um, making sure children are never abused you know now the thing about it is because people don't want to be looked at they accuse other people but we always make sure to protect our kids, make sure we protect our neighbor kids. The other thing is making sure that we're actually good to one another. Meaning, it, you may not like somebody, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't check on them. That doesn't mean that you want them dead. That doesn't mean that just because you guys have two different viewpoints on things, it doesn't mean you have to hate somebody, okay? And I see a lot of people with a lot of hate, but they don't even understand where the hate's coming from. They're doing it because everybody else is doing it. It's that old saying, if all your friends jumped off the bridge, would you? How many of us said, yeah, no, you wouldn't. You wouldn't even begin to jump off the bridge if you see a bunch of people. What was that cult? Um, Larry, what was the name of that cult? Uh, 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 they drank the purple punch, remember? And there was a whole bunch of them that they thought that uh, Haley's Comet was, they had to die in order to, get, to hop on Haley's Comet. 
And so they had this purple punch and they were all covered with sheets and everything. It was back in the 1980s, early 90s. And so they all drank poison. That was mixed in purple punch. And there were, I forgot how many of them there were, about 80 or something. Maybe Actually, maybe a couple hundred. But it was funny because the leader of the cult didn't drink the punch. <laughs> so he killed everybody. Because they, everybody got this idea in their head that, oh, well, if that many people can think that Haley's Comet's going to take them away, how many people are going to believe that your government's going to take care of you, that health care is real, you know, that they're doing everything, that the big business is out for your... You know, I don't need to sit there and talk about aliens and all this other crap. You just have to have common sense, you know? Do what's right for your neighbors. Do what's right for your community. Do what's right for you. But that's how we protect each other, you know? Go to the fairs. Go to the county fairs every once in a while and see the, how great people are, you know? Go to some of these small groups that meet up, like Mississippi Valley Hunters and Fishermen. Great group. You'll notice they all, everybody's got different opinions and everything. Just because you belong to a group, when you go to church, not everybody's going to be, um, uh, if you go to church, no matter what kind it is, you know, not everybody's going to be Democrat or Republican or left or right. And you'll have some wackos in there. But the whole idea is everybody comes together to be better, to be better people. And when I was in the Marine Corps, you know, you get all these hard charges. These Marines, they're just nasty. But it's really funny is because a lot of them didn't have much. They didn't come from much. And they found a brotherhood where, you know, they had somebody watching their back, you know. They got a blanket on them. They, they were able to be trained. They were given education, you know. It reminds me of the movie Braveheart. So people in the military remind me of Braveheart. And if you remember the beginning of Braveheart, not, oh, we'll be free. Not, not, not that part. I'm talking about where he was a kid and his family was killed, okay. So the military is like Braveheart. And all of us are our Mel Gibsons, okay? And what the military does, and this is what people, we, they always joke and they say military don't. Actually, men and women of the military of all branches are probably some of the smartest people you'll ever meet. And the reason why is they're taken from all walks of life, okay? Whether you're enlisted or officer, whatever it is. And the first thing you're done, you're stripped of everything that you used to know. And I don't mean knowledge-wise. I'm talking about your clothing, who you are, and you're slowly, basically, I guess you could say, reborn within a military culture. Everybody's like, oh, well, that's about... No, actually, military culture is very peaceful. And it's not a religion. It's, it's just the way that we protect our communities. But we have to know different languages. We have to have different cultures around us. You know, people come from every society, you know, every color, religion. And it's funny because we do go to each other's churches. We do talk to each other about what's going on. So we're all for, forced into this big pot. Just like the United States has so many different cultures and, and religions and everything else. But the military is forced to work. Then now everybody has to work together. And then, like I said, a lot of people don't even know that the Marine Corps has a Marine Corps reading program. To where we are required to read. And we're required to uh, do with, um, what's called MCI, the Marine Corps Institute, these books that we have to read. Everywhere from hydroponics to gardening, yes, gardening, to spelling, to math for Marines. You think these are all jokes. I've got them all downstairs. I'll, um, in the next couple of weeks when we start doing our PTSD um, thing on here live, I'll start showing you some of the books and everything, okay? And the whole point of the military, and people can learn a lot from it, okay, is we're not taught politics in the military we're taught how to defend our country we're taught how to respect cultures we're, we're taught how the right way to do things you know we're taught not to shoot i know that sounds really weird because oh man in the and like take the marine corps we have one rule one shot one kill if you're going to shoot you better you it, it's got to count why because you don't want to waste the ammunition you, you know you only have so much on you all right but people they look at the military as this, oh, just everybody's killing everybody. Really, if that were the case, everybody in the world would be dead right now. Okay? We're, we, we're not, we, what we're taught is how to use common sense. We're taught how to respect cultures and religions. We're taught how to speak languages that we never even a million years thought that we'd ever need or learn. We're thrown in with people that we call brothers and sisters now that normally, you know, people look at them like, oh, they're just a bunch of gangbangers. But now all of a sudden, those are our best friends. 
you know, here you've got a group of misfits. Uh, there was a, a movie, and it was a bunch of prisoners during World War II, and they had to go take over. It was um, the Despicable, or it was, um, oh, give me a second. Um, I forgot the name of it. But needless to say, that's the military in general. They take some of the best and the worst, and they put us all together. And you know what we have to do? We have to overcome. We have to figure things out. We don't have scientists with us, you know. Yes, we have corpsmen with us, but we don't get doctors with us all the time. We don't have religious leaders with us. So our friends have to make up what we don't have. And they may not be that themselves, but they have to be the best thing, ne the next best thing, okay? When we were over in Afghanistan and stuff, not me in general, I'm just saying in general, okay? Mm -hmm. They weren't going over there to change the culture, even though they were, everybody in America and the news source, oh, let's change, you know, you can't change a 2,000-year-old culture. They went over there doing the best they could, you know, when you got bombs dropping on kids, you know, the reason why people have PTSD is not because they killed, but because of what they saw, what they had to go through, you know, what they were experiencing that they would normally never have to experience it, you know? It's like being at the farm and taking off the farm and thrown in the middle of New York City somewhere. You're like, what the heck is this? It's a very hard lifestyle when you go to places like New York. The people are still great, but when you go from the farm to New York City, or then you take somebody from New York and you throw them in the middle of California where everything's laid back, you know? And so in the military, they're all we're all taken, we're thrown in together to overcome objectives. But here's what's nice is we all have different backgrounds. We all have different skill sets. It's not a, oh, you're from there. Oh, you don't know that. We all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. Some of us have learned, you know, leadership's abilities because we work better under pressure. You know, when we learn that others take orders better under pressure. But then you come out in um, everyday society and now all of a sudden it's like, well, you don't have a college degree, really? Show me a college kid that can do what I can do. Show me a college kid that can speak the languages we had to speak, had to go and live amongst cultures by ourselves without getting killed, you know? And that's what's going on every day in the military. You have these people. We have real-world experiences. We already had the, the vocational schools down pat, okay? And then, you know, when you take a college kid after four to eight years of college and they're demanding a job because I'm such and such, because I'm great, we laugh at you. Not because we don't love you, not because we disrespect you, but because you're looking like a fool right now. You went to college, you partied, you studied in class. Great, great, great. Good on you. Yay, yay, yay. How about these other guys out there that, you know, had to help deliver babies? And I'm not talking about cops, I'm talking about overseas. Or had to go on humanitarian missions or help people in Kosovo or stop the smuggler, log smuggler, so people wouldn't die in the middle of winter. You know, or, you know, and then... On top of that, you had to make sure to know who's who within the family and you had to take on the adaption of culture because you can't touch women or you can't talk to certain people or you can't put two of them together. You couldn't put an Albanian and a, Serb a Serbian together no matter what you did. It's the Hatfields and the McCoys all over again if you did that. You know, we can utilize and use references from things in the United States to show you how it is in the real world. But the real world has a lot of great people in it. And um, we're going to go over that when we start uh, doing our segments over uh, PTSD and military. And not it's not going to be sad or anything. It's going to be great. But there's going to be men and women that have PTSD. And how they did. then all of a sudden they, had to, they have to deal with it right now during the coronavirus and having to be stuck. Okay? Because remember, with PTSD, you're a prisoner in your head. Now, some people... It's depression. PTSD can be angered. PTSD can be addiction. PTSD can be lots of different things. And we just sum it up with saying it's PTSD, post-traumatic stress uh, disorder. But it's not. It's lots of different things. And everybody has different types. So not everybody wants to say it. Vietnam, we couldn't predict this stuff. We didn't know what it was. And like I said, we are so grateful for the Vietnam vets now. Not all of them were killers or baby killers or stuff like that, you know. Once again, politicians and government turning against the very ones that they forced in what's called a draft to send overseas, you know. 
And, you know, I'm sorry, but the military will never forgive Jane Fonda because she got a lot of people killed because she turned in a lot of guys that tried to basically give her and say, hey, we're here. She turned it in to the Vietnamese and they went and killed all those guys and she had no remorse for it. So, like, people like her will never be forgiven by the Vietnam vets because they were doing their job. They were just doing what they had to do. And somebody in Hollywood wanted to make a name for themselves. And to this day... They don't mean anything they say or do because they keep doing the same stuff they intended. Okay, I understand that everybody's going to join the military. I understand that everybody believes in it. That's fine. But some people, it's their only way out. It's their only way of making money. It's the only way of getting college. It's the only way to get out of the gang. It's the, you know, and uh, it's been going on for years. So we will be uh, talking a lot about that when all that comes up and everything. Um... Does anybody have any questions for me right now about everything going on, even from our motivation, the stuff we're going to be doing to different events? I told everybody the Soapbox Derby will be uh, July 24th and 25th. I told them we're raising money by um, YouTube videos. Go to jeffjansen.info. Uh, and because uh, we are doing, um, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, I can't even think right now. Um, you can go on there any monies that we make off those videos to the marketing dollar through the video so every time you watch it i think we make between i think we make about five cents per video something like that so they've got to be watched quite a few times well a lot of them have been watched and all that money then will go to the um quincy derby and there's a lot of derby cars we put on there in fact we just released um i just released uh 30 60 new videos that haven't had anybody watch them yet so they got to get up to i think a thousand videos before we make any money off them so we have to get those numbers up and we have to get the name out so the more people that watch it and you don't got to pay anything you just go watch the videos granted it's done by me mostly so you're probably going to look at them like oh my god this guy does not know how to do a video but hey not everybody has money to donate but you know everybody has time to watch a video right so that's a that's a very uh, positive thing that we try to do nonstop, um and uh, eventually um some of the videos i told Vern that if it's military he does a thing called uh thank you for your service um so long word comedian he they they uh thank every veteran that's ever served me i'm a veteran so of course i'm big with veteran stuff but my mom also had a cancer so i'm big with helping people with cancer I'm big with kids, you know, because I've been blessed with a healthy, healthy child. So, you know, the Soapbox Derby represents that. You know, uh, we do things with horses and with the fairs. Um, we do all the parades. Um, I think the next parades we'll be getting in is the Hannibal 4th of July parade, as long as it's still going on. Hannibal holiday parade, Hannibal Halloween parade. <laughs> I think Quincy parades are almost, I think the Dogwood, oh, of course, we'll be in the Veterans Day parade for Quincy and Hannibal, maybe Keokuk. Um, we, uh, I think the, that's the next parade in Quincy. I think the Dogwood parade's the last one, and that was supposed to be last weekend, I think, maybe. I don't know. It got canceled, though, I'm sure, because of the coronavirus. So, that's what we're going to do with that. Um, what else we got going on? uh looking at my schedule here to see what else we have um every day make sure you're out there telling people they're great you know sitting there talking to people if you see something wrong check on your neighbors okay uh, i know there's debates right now with uh, masks and stuff i'm not going to get in that because i can't tell you because i don't know if it's good or bad i can't tell you about gloves i don't know if it's good or bad i can't get into that kind of stuff not because i don't want to but i i don't know i can't um tell you that um also uh we will be doing our cdl our um our team uh trucking calls starting uh next monday uh we put them to the side for a little bit because there's a lot of things going on but we're going to start those back up so anybody's welcome on those calls to uh, find out what's going on in the trucking field and stuff but i do it for my legal shield business um i do them twice a week and I try to get some other people on and we go over a little bit what they are. It's an actual phone number you call into and you put the code in. So I will have that um, on here. I put several times I need to put those codes and that phone number on my business card, which is a digital business card. And I'll put it up here for everybody. So it'll be on here, my YouTube page, um, my Instagram page, uh, my Snapchat uh instagram snapchat youtube 
Oh, Twitter. So one of the things, I'm not very big Twitter following. I got started with that just a couple months ago. Believe it or not, I never did do a Twitter, and I got started with that a couple months ago. So if anybody wants to um, add me to Twitter, go right ahead. Um, anybody want to say anything or talk about anything while we're here? Um, like I said, everybody has a voice on my page. I don't mind if you guys want to say something, talk about something, just let me know. I was just kind of seeing if there was a... Uh, Okay, they're talking about opening up beaches and stuff right now. I'm sure that'll make my buddy Tim happy. Uh, Redding. Uh, Geronimo Redfeather. <laughs> I'm sure that would make him uh, very, very happy. And uh, we'll go from there. So anyway, if uh, anybody has anything else for me, let me know. If not, I will talk with everybody later. Have a great one. And I said, have a good one, everybody.